Owning a home. It's the cornerstone of the American dream, right? A place to call your own, build a life, and maybe even a disturbingly elaborate holiday display. But here's the thing. That dream is often entangled with the political landscape, swaying to the rhythm of election cycles like a lawn flamingo in a hurricane. This year is no different. As we gear up for another nail-biting election, the housing market is watching with bated breath and probably checking Zillow a little too often. Why? Because the outcome of this election could significantly impact your chances of owning a piece of that star-spangled American dream. So buckle up as we unpack the intricate and often hilarious relationship between election years and home ownership in these United States. We'll delve into historical trends, navigate the choppy waters of political uncertainty, and try to make sense of it all without resorting to excessive consumption of election-themed stress snacks. You might think that election years would throw the housing market into complete chaos. After all, we're talking about a system where we let people who unironically use the phrase fiscal responsibility make decisions about our economy. But surprisingly, history tells a slightly different story. Looking back, the housing market tends to slow down in the months leading up to an election. It's like everyone collectively hits the pause button, holding their breath to see who's about to take the reins of the free world and the economy. Once the election dust settles, things generally stabilize. The market usually picks up again, regardless of who wins. It seems like buyers, sellers, and even real estate agents are creatures of habit. They crave stability, even if it means waiting a few months to see if the new president plans to turn the White House lawn into a putting green. Now, let's talk about uncertainty, the housing market's least favorite guest. See, financial markets, including those tied to housing, hate surprises. They like predictable trends, steady growth, and knowing what to expect next. Elections? Not exactly known for their predictability. When election season rolls around, Wall Street starts sweating. The stock market gets jittery, interest rates might fluctuate, and investors get cautious. This uncertainty tax, as some economists call it, can trickle down to the housing market, making lenders a bit more hesitant to approve loans and buyers a tad more hesitant to commit. Think of it this way. Would you buy a house if you weren't sure what the interest rates would be next month or if the new administration might suddenly decide to outlaw avocado toast? A travesty we know? Probably not. And that hesitation, my friends, is what can make the housing market feel like a game of Jenga during an election year. Let's talk interest rates, the lifeblood of the housing market. They can make or break the home buying dream, and unfortunately they're about as predictable as a toddler on a sugar rush. Now interest rates are influenced by a whole host of factors, but one of the big ones is, you guessed it, the political climate. See the Federal Reserve, the folks who get to play with the interest rate levers, pay close attention to elections. If a new administration comes in with policies that are seen as potentially disruptive to the economy, think massive tax cuts or a sudden urge to build a wall entirely out of commemorative coins, the Fed might raise interest rates to keep inflation in check. And when interest rates go up, borrowing money gets more expensive, which can put a damper on the housing market. Section 5, 2024. What could happen? No, seriously, we have no idea. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should we say the donkey and the elephant battling it out on the lawn of the White House, the 2024 election. Predicting the future is a fool's game, especially when it comes to politics. But one thing is for sure. The outcome of this election could have a ripple effect on the housing market. Will interest rates skyrocket faster than a SpaceX rocket? Will new policies make it easier or harder to qualify for a mortgage? Will avocado toast be outlawed? These are the questions that keep economists up at night, probably while they're also checking Zillow for the 10th time that hour. Section 6. Candidate A vs. Candidate B, A Tale of Two Housing Policies Now let's delve into the nitty-gritty of how specific policies proposed by the current presidential hopefuls might impact your quest for homeownership. We'll call them Candidate A and Candidate B to maintain a semblance of impartiality even though we all know what's really going on here. Candidate A, known for their love of tax cuts and deregulation, has hinted at policies that could potentially lead to lower interest rates and a more relaxed lending environment. Sounds great for aspiring homeowners, right? Well, hold your horses. Candidate B, on the other hand, is all about government intervention in the housing market, proposing increased affordable housing initiatives and stricter lending regulations. 
This could mean more options for first-time home buyers, but potentially stricter lending requirements and a slower pace of home value appreciation. Section 7. Local elections matter too, don't forget about zoning. While the presidential election hogs the spotlight, let's not forget about the unsung heroes of the housing market local elections. You see those city council meetings and mayoral races you typically ignore? They can have a bigger impact on your neighborhood's housing landscape than you might think. Local governments control things like zoning laws, building permits, and property taxes, all of which can directly influence the availability and affordability of housing in your area. Want more affordable housing options? Support candidates who prioritize it. Concerned about overdevelopment changing the character of your neighborhood? Pay attention to candidates' stances on those issues. Remember folks, local elections aren't just about potholes and dog park ordinances, they're about shaping the future of your community, one zoning debate at a time. Section 8. The Power of Prediction. How Forecasts Influence Buyer Behavior. Now let's talk about the fascinating world of housing market predictions and how they can influence buyer behavior, for better or for worse. You see, humans are hardwired to seek out patterns and make sense of the future, even if it means relying on shaky predictions from self-proclaimed experts with dubious track records. When a respected economist predicts a housing market boom, buyers get excited. They rush to grab a piece of the pie before prices skyrocket, often driving up demand and ironically fulfilling the prediction. Conversely, when forecasts paint a gloomy picture, buyers retreat into their shells clutching their down payments like precious heirlooms. These self-fulfilling prophecies can create volatility in the market, turning what might have been a gentle wave into a tsunami of panic or euphoria. So the next time you hear a housing market prediction, take it with a grain of salt, or maybe a whole shaker full. Section 9. To buy or not to buy during an election year. That is the question. Ah, the age-old question that has plagued potential homeowners for generations. Should I brave the uncertain waters of an election year and buy a home, or should I cower in the rental market, clutching my security deposit and hoping for the best? Unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. It depends on your individual circumstances, risk tolerance, and whether you're willing to bet your dream home on the outcome of a political coin toss. If you're comfortable with a little uncertainty and have your heart set on buying now, go for it. Just do your research, explore different mortgage options, and maybe consult a financial advisor who doesn't get all their financial advice from late-night cable news. Section 10. Beyond the election long-term trends shaping home ownership, while elections might feel like all-consuming events that dictate the fate of the world and our housing markets, it's crucial to remember that they're just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Long-term economic trends, demographic shifts, and technological advancements all play a role in shaping the future of homeownership. For example, the rise of remote work and the gig economy are changing how and where people choose to live, potentially impacting housing demand in certain areas. The aging population and the increasing cost of living are also factors to consider. So, while it's tempting to fixate on the short-term fluctuations of the housing market during an election year, don't lose sight of the bigger picture. The forces shaping the future of homeownership are complex and multifaceted, and understanding them requires looking beyond the immediate political landscape. Section 11. The bottom line, your vote, your home, your future. As we've seen, the relationship between election years and home ownership in the U.S. is a tangled web of economics, politics, and good old-fashioned human behavior. While predicting the future of the housing market with absolute certainty is about as likely as finding a unicorn at a petting zoo, understanding the factors at play can help you make informed decisions. Remember, your vote matters, both at the ballot box and in the housing market. Stay informed, do your research, and don't be afraid to seek out expert advice. And most importantly, don't let the stress of election season drive you to make rash decisions, like buying a house solely because it has a bunker that matches your political affiliation. So go forth, informed citizens, and may the odds of finding your dream home, at a price you can afford, be ever in your favor. And remember, no matter who wins the election, we'll all still be here trying to navigate the wonderful, wacky world of American homeownership, one property tax bill at a time. Good luck out there.